Thank you very much. We are going down from Bren to Pelvis. That is life. Um, okay. Um, I work with uh, a team in Madrid who perform many, many, uh, who treat many, many patients of pelvic congestion syndrome. So I will report mainly their experience, not mine, because it was Tony Gasparis who was in charge, who gives a talk on pelvic congestion syndrome. Concerning the epidemiology, we know that uh, uh, pelvic congestion syndrome is a common condition, and reports indicate that more than 30% of women complain about pain in the lower abdomen at some time in their life. Symptoms. The first one is, of course, pelvic pain, but it should be associated with other, such as pelvic heaviness, dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, lumbar pain, urinary frequency. And you have also signs in pelvic congestion syndrome that are vulvar, bottom, and atypical lower limb varices, and sometimes hemorrhoids. What is the pathophysiology? Do you have a pointer? Um, you kind of, okay, good. You kind of um, isolated uh, reflexive ovarian vein related to multiple pregnancy or reflexive internal vein tributaries. That leads to pelvic varices or buttock and vulvar varices. The other group is a compression. Compression of the left renal vein, nutcracker, or iliac vein meterna. And in turn, you know, the compression is responsible of reflux in the gonadal vein or in the pelvic vein. What is interesting is the, the, the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor works as a um, uh, perforator. When they are competent, you know, uh, there is no lower limb varices, and when they are incompetent, you have atypical lower limb varices. That is a kind of hypothesis, I don't know. I'm sure it's true. But you must be defiant. It is admitted that first, symptom should have been present for at least six months before considering pelvic congestion syndrome as a possible diagnosis. Second, by no means all pelvic symptoms of signs are attributable to pelvic congestion syndrome, so careful diagnostic procedures are required to identify those who may benefit from treatment of ovarian internal ileal bait and pelvic anatomical and physiopathological anomalies. That is the second point. Many, many protocols are used to identify the presence of PCS, and no comparative trial has been published to evaluate the currently used criteria. Nevertheless, there is a consensus for agreeing that selective venography is the best investigation for identifying the anatomical and pathological anomaly of PCS. But since selective venography is an invasive investigation, it is recommended that investigation start with non-invasive duplex ultrasonography that will demonstrate finding suggestive, only suggestive, of PCS. In our daily practice, I mean in Madrid, we use an investigation diagram when female patients consult us for seeing and symptoms described above. We start from the beginning, which is pelvic congestion syndrome. Um, if they, if we, of course, in every case we perform gynecological examination. Abnormal, we stop. You know, normal, we use a transvaginal echodoplo. If there is no pelvic varicose vein, we stop the investigation. And we have two cases, pelvic varicose vein with continuous flow or non-continuous flow. Um, you mean that uh, it's increased by uh, some maneuver. So when you have a continuous flow, probably there is a compression. And if you have a compression, you can identify it by abdominal transparental echodoplo. 
you can find um, nutcracker syndrome or iliac vein compression. And in this case, we perform selective venography to confirm nutcracker syndrome or iliac vein compression. After that, that is a treatment. If there is a reflux in all cases, including nutcracker syndrome, we don't treat first the nutcracker syndrome, but we perform embolization. And when, in, when there is iliac vein compression, um, identified by Avis, if I, available, we perform balloon stenting first that suppress the reflux in the tributary of the iliac vein. The other, the other part is a, a patient who has um, non-continuous flow. We go directly to selective flebography, reflux, emboli possible embolization according to the severity of symptom, no reflux, no treatment. That is a diagram we use. Okay, some, uh, some uh, images about uh, transvaginal echodopter. On the top line, you have transvaginal duplex ultrasound. You have a continuous flow. And uh, the same patient, both venous flow and diameter during a valsalva maneuver. There is an increase in the size of the pelvic uh, varices. So um, we know that is a continuous flow. The other one is pelvic varices with continuous flow. There is no augmentation with the valve solvent. Um, so in this case, we go directly to abdominal transparietal duplex ultrasound in order to identify, for example, in this case, a compression of the common left iliac vein, which is a maternal syndrome. Um, and uh, when uh, we, uh, we find it, that when you find a nutcracker, uh, we go to uh, the next step is a venography using, in all cases, brachial axis because it's the best way to investigate all the pain, you know. Um, and uh, in this case, you, have, you can identify a left renal vein compression associated with left ovarian vein reflux. Um, that is a venography. In this case, we use a bilateral femoral axis. There is a left common iliac vein compression, and you can identify a reflux in the left internal iliac vein fibula. Uh, when you use the brachial axis, uh, for example, on the right, you have an ovarian vein competent and below incompetent. On the left, you have a left ovarian vein competent and incompetent. Very easy to identify. So what was the result of embolization? Because we perform only embolization. You can see that the number of patients is small. There was the first publication was in 1997, and it, um, you have about 20, uh, 40 patients. The result, the follow-up is short. Here you can see that the follow-up is short. It's uh, less than two years in most cases. That was the first study. But you can see the clinical outcome, variable, of course, because the first one we have uh, total relief in about 60% of patients. And in Venbricks, um, you have a significant partial uh, relief in patient. Now we go to the, the, the paper published uh, more recently by Sheng, by Kim. Uh, Kim has a large series of more than 100 patients, and uh, uh, you can see that the result he presented is overall evaluation. 83% um, were improved, only uh, 13 were unchanged, and 4% worsened. And there is also a, a series of uh, Cretan with good results. Ashu2 and Quan, you can see all the, the series, the follow-up is longer. In Ashu2 series, 45 months. In Quan series, uh, 45 months uh, almost. So that is most interesting because we need long follow-up. Um, you know, in Madrid, they were unable to collect all the data. So we selected 100 consecutive patients 
treated between February 2008 to October, that is about one hour and a half, by stenting or embolization of symptomatic pelvic congestion syndrome. Etiology was primary in all except for one post-thrombotic ovarian pain. And the mean follow-up was uh, short in this series. It was only uh, 14 months. And uh, um, almost uh, 65 of patients had no more pain. 30% were improved and 7 in change. But what is, what is really interesting is that there was a good correlation between clinical result and post-operative investigation, which is very, very important in any kind of treatment, of course. You can see after stenting, you know, of um, the iliac vein, the, um, the incompetent tributaries of the iliac vein had disappeared, and after coil and embolization, there is no more viruses in the lower limb, you know, that were present on the left. Another one is uh, by using embolization and platzer. You can see that after coil and embolization, well, the, the result, no more reflux. In conclusion, drugs can be sometimes achieve temporary improvement in a proportion of patients with PCS. Data on outcome after scleroderapy are not conclusive. Concerning the surgery, we have data only uh, with um, uh, prim primary ovarian veil reflux, you know, that was treated by surgery. And of course, we have data of uh, a treatment um, of pelvic, of uh, uh, iliac vein compression by surgery that now everybody is using stenting. At present, GRAD 1C recommendation for pelvic congestion syndrome under venous treatment by embolization can be justified. To attribute a stronger recommendation, we need long term follow up of clinical theory as currently only one as reported a five-year follow-up. Thank you very much.